Hey everyone, uh, I wanted to thank those who were able to attend the live webinar. Um, unfortunately, there was there are some audio report uh, issues with the recording, um, so I'll be I'll try to re-record as much content as I can here. Uh, this is the first of a series of webinars that we will be starting uh, for developers. Uh, this first one will be um, this first one will be on how to transfer data and build devices on the uh, the people's network. My name is Jeffrey Han, and I am I'm the customer engineering lead at Helium. So an overview of today's webinar, I'll be going over the new Helium developer SDK that we recently released. Uh, it can be found at developer.helium.com. And I'll be going over, uh, I'll be showing a, showcasing a demo on how to build a sample application to send packets uh, via the Helium network. I'll be going over the LongFi protocol, um, some basic device hardware requirements. Um, I'll have a demo and there will be a hot hot promotion. Uh, because this is a re-recorded, um, unfortunately there won't be a Q&A session. So what is LongFi? LongFi is Helium's open source, uh, low power, long range wireless networking protocol. It utilizes the lower physical layer and it's designed for Sem Semtech radio modules. It utilizes a 900 megahertz RF signal and it's most similar to another protocol called LoRaWAN. Uh, however, there are a few, a few key differences. Um, LoRaWAN requires you to deploy a private network using a LoRaWAN gateway, uh, whereas the Helium network utilizes peer-to-peer -peer, um, community-owned hotspots. Um, and any device will be able to connect on the Helium network regardless of location, as long as they are within regional coverage. We don't have any size limitations on packet uh, data transfer uh, because we do fragment and reassemble the packets and there is error correction. Uh, when compared to LoRaWAN, I believe depending on data rates, it will maximize at, uh, at 243 bytes. And because the custom protocol that we designed from the ground up it's uh, more portable and lightweight and has longer range. So some of the device requirements, um, we have a portable C library, a uh, long fi device that provides support for some tech radio modules. Uh, however, we also included three bindings um, for three different architectures that make it much simpler to begin developing on. Uh, we have an Arduino binding for boards that are supported with by the uh, Arduino. Um, there is support for the STM32 series of microcontrollers, and there is also a Rust binding for the long C library. Uh, and if you walk through the documentation, uh, you'll notice that there is a lower wind discovery board, development board that um, we've been recommending. And it really is a great platform to begin developing on because it has a Murata module that uh, that is that integrates both a Semtech transceiver and an STM microcontroller. Uh, plus, it has Arduino Uno pins, so you can easily attach uh, those those shields if you'd like. So now, I, now I'd like to step into the demo. So this is our this is our development our our device management console uh, dashboard called console. If you haven't done so, you, know, you can register an account here. I've already done so, so I'll be just using my my own account. And when you register, you'll be asked to provide an organization and a team. Uh, team organizations can usually be organized by company and then later uh, further separated by region, uh, location, uh, or even floors of a building. So let's begin by creating a device. Uh, 
uh, I will create a new test device um, with an ID of new device ID. And if we go into the device details, we'll notice that there are three elements that we will need to track. There is an organization unique identifier, OUI, that tells us uh, where to route, um, who owns, basically who owns this data. There is a device ID and there is a pre-shared key. Uh, and you'll need to copy all these. So now let's step into the Arduino IDE. So we have actually been able to include the LongFi library into the Arduino IDE itself. If you hop in, if you step into the library manager and do a search for LongFi. You will see that here. And we have provided some built in examples. Uh, the one I'm currently on is basically a simple sketch that will help you transmit packets via the modified bullet call. So you take the segment, the device details from console that you saw earlier and paste them into the IDE. For this sample sketch, we are sending um, a simple, simple section, segment of data here and incrementing uh, the first element. And it's a pre-built sketch, so all we need to do is compile. and upload. Now let's go back into our device details on console. And you'll start to see packets flowing in the live, the real time, uh, real time display. And I'd like to bring your attention to the event log here. It'll track uh, all the hotspots in the in the vicinity that are receiving the packets. It's eight byte packet, and then we have a signal strength indicator that will kind of give you some idea of where the hotspot is located uh, and it'll give you some semblance of a range indicator. Moving back up, you'll notice that these packets appear red and that is because there is no channel set. So they are currently not being routed uh, to any endpoint. So let's do that now. We step into the channels tab and we have a couple of options for you. Uh, Azure, AWS, and Google IoT are uh, still being worked on. However, we do have uh, an HTTP uh, endpoint where you can create post, send post requests. So I've created a free HTTP endpoint in request bin. And what we'll need to do is simply copy copy the URL and paste it. Paste the URL here and then find a channel name and create a channel. Now once that is done, uh, let's actually create a new device.
and you'll notice that it has a new device ID and pre-shared keys. So let me copy and paste this new one. Go back to Arduino IDE. Recompile. And upload the new sketch like so. So I would like to mention that for during the duration of this beta, um, it will not cost anything to send packets over the Helium network. Uh, however, we do have in the future, uh, there will be a cost to send, uh, a, a fixed dollar cost to send 24 byte fragments, um, 24 byte segments uh, for, um, one data credit. Um, there currently, there will be, there will be a, a cost associated uh, between, where we, there will be a relationship between the Helium network token and data credits, although currently that has not been defined. So if we hop back into our device, you'll see that now the packets are now being routed to the HTTP endpoint that we, we just set. Now notice that some of these packets are failing. Um, unfortunately, just with, so with this sketch, it is basically sending packets every two seconds, uh, which may not be, uh, which the endpoint may not be handling. Well, again, this is a live representation of all the hotspots in the area which are able to receive the packets. Um, I am located uh, recording from our SF office, and we have a fairly dense helium network um, in SF, so you can see the number of hotspots that are able to receive these packets. So that actually concludes the demo portion. And I will like to bring attention, uh, let you guys know that we are running a, a promotion. Uh, there is a discount code PI100 that will get you $100 off your hotspot and it will include a free holiday PI, um, which it will end uh, this Sunday um, on the 17th. And make sure you do send your order to developer at Helium and we will do our best to help get your order expedited so you can begin testing devices. And then here are a couple of other tools that are available. Uh, there is a network coverage checker at network.helium.com. It shows you a re lifetime representation of all the hotspots that are active. There is a blockchain dashboard that provides hotspot earnings. And if you haven't done so, I highly encourage you to join uh, both the developer community Slack and the community discourse uh, for uh, community discussion and 
uh, lifetime responses to any questions that you may have. Uh, and it'd be really cool to see what kind of projects that everyone is working on. So that will con conclude this recording of the first Helium developer webinar. Um, again, feel free to send inquiries to developer at helium.com. Um, I'll be tracking that email, email alias. Um, please take advantage of the promotion that we have. Um, the, the, pies, uh, the pies are absolutely delicious. Um, and uh, we love to help ship you out hotspots so you can begin developing as soon as possible. Uh, thanks again for attending this webinar. Um, I hope to hold these more of these in the future, uh, possibly bi-weekly uh, if possible. Um, and then um, we're going to be building a lot more sample applications. Um, there is a hotspot guide in the developer documentation that currently only supports packet forwarding. However, uh, mining capabilities will be provided in the future. Um, there is an issue that you will need data credits to onboard your device um, onto the blockchain, which uh, because they're currently not in circulation, um, isn't, isn't available. Um, but other than that, uh, thanks again for attending uh, and hope to see you guys again soon. Thanks.